Hello, hello, Crafty Crandall here. Today's video is a bit of a chill one. I'm going to do a real time paint with me while I paint a screenshot from the show Peaky Blinders. This is a show that's available on Netflix and I've recently completed the first season of the show. So I think it's a six episode season. Each episode is about an hour long. And I took this screenshot while watching because it looked very cinematic and just like a really pretty picture to try to paint and a picture that looks like it would be really amenable to the watercolor format. So I'm going to be doing this in my Square Handbook & Co watercolor journal. This is 8 inches by 8 inches and I'm going to be using my Sennelier watercolors with a variety of brushes. So I'm starting off with my uh, Zen by Roland Langwinnaker, uh, more of like a mop brush, just to lay down the initial wet on wet technique. And then I'll move into more detailed brushes with like my silver black velvet brushes as we go forward. As far as te speaking content during this video, I will be talking a little bit about the process as I continue to uh, paint this piece. <laughs> As I said, here I'm starting with the wet and wet technique. You can see how that evolves throughout the piece. And then I also wanted to just talk a bit about the show and maybe some of my like other media consumption preferences beyond just books because really that's probably the only thing that I talk about on this channel is books because I consider myself to be you know, a small booktuber, and so I talk a lot about books, but really I've got a lot of other media consumption uh, interests as well, one of which being either television or, you know, video related media. I also, as I've spoken about previously, really love music as well, and so during this chill kind of chatty paint with me, I figured I would just talk a little bit more about it. Since this piece is inspired by the show Peaky Blinders, let's start there, shall we? <laughs> uh, so far, like I said, I am only on season one of Peaky Blinders, but I kind of thought that I would like it from the beginning. I am a little bit disappointed that Netflix advertises this show with the actress from The Queen's Gambit, because at no point in the first season was the actress from The Queen's Gambit in Peaky Blinders. <laughs> that was the entire reason that I started watching the show to begin with, because as you saw previously, I have painted a screen, screen cap redraw from The Queen's Gambit, which was a show that I similarly enjoyed. But more on that in a little bit. So Peaky Blinders is essentially set in um, England. I'm not 100% what actual, like, year or time frame it's set in, but it's it's pretty old, and uh, it's really interesting because the Peaky Blinders, as they're called, is essentially a family who is what you would consider to be like a mob or mafia type family. They've got control over a region, and they are in control of different money-making avenues within uh, this place. Actually, Winston Churchill is referenced a lot, so I suppose when Winston Churchill was in power is really when this, this series is set. And I apologize, I didn't do any research in advance of filming this, uh, but regardless, that's okay because I'm not going to talk much more about it, <laughs> as I have only watched one season of the show. Thus far, I really enjoy it. Um, the primary actor is actually one of my favorite actors from uh, Inception, which is my favorite movie. So that also drew me to want to watch it, and I do plan on continuing the series from here. The other show that I said I liked was The Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit was a show that I watched recently and truly just loved. It was a short series. It was not, uh, it's not going to be like continued, I don't think. It was based on a book, which admittedly I have not read. <laughs> Uh, I might go back and read the book because the series was so good, uh, but if you like chess, if you're interested in a strong female lead character who, you know, has her problematic elements, I think that that was a fantastic show. The only other show that I've really watched recently was Gotham, and 
again, another great Netflix show. <laughs> I really enjoyed Gotham. Uh, I have always been a huge Batman fan ever since I was a kid, so that one just kind of spoke to me in that way. And again, like the actors just really made the show. I, it's just astounding to me how like good actors can just make or break a show. Um, if there's no good actors, then I find that I am never drawn into any of the characters, even if they are characters that I already know and love from either a book or an animated show or, you know, in Batman's case, in like every other Batman thing that I've watched. I mean, I, I love Batman Begins, uh, The Dark Knight, some of my favorite movies, so I've seen a lot of Batman content. Going back to movies, so like I said, Inception, Batman Begins, etc. are some of my favorite movies. Um, I don't really watch a ton of movies, so coming up with favorites for this uh, media is a little bit difficult, but just know that those are some of my favorites. I tend to watch a lot of like action and adventure movies. Uh, oh, In Time. In Time was a great movie too. I really liked that one. <laughs> and you'll kind of see a theme that I like movies that feature the actors from Inception. <laughs> I don't really have that many favorite actors. I actually don't know really many of their names. Um, I mean, what, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I think, is one of the only ones, and obviously Leo DiCaprio. Um, but other than them, I don't really have favorite actors either, so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> Um, Killian Murphy, or Cillian Murphy, I'm honestly not even sure how to pronounce his name, is the head, um, the main character in Peaky Blinders, and he does a phenomenal job, so I suppose you could count him among the favorites, even though, as I just said, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. That tells you how little it takes for someone to become my favorite actor, um, but regardless, there you have it. Uh, other kind of media consumption things that I really enjoy. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of music. I listen to a lot of music. Um, I don't know if anyone actually cares at this point, <laughs> if anyone's even still watching this video. Um, let me talk about the painting quick, just for a moment. So I employed the wet on wet technique for all of the background. As you can see, I didn't do a great job of really defining the sun, which is obviously the focal point of the piece, but I tried to define it a little bit later on, and to be honest, it is definitely the weakest part of my representation of the screenshot, but this can be difficult to achieve, so I did my best. I am then using the wet on dry technique to get um, all of the little details in the background, trying to keep them pretty light because I want the foreground elements to be a lot darker, and then the place where uh, the main character is will be obviously the darkest and uh, one more of the, the focal point. So I think that your eye is supposed to be first drawn to the sun and then up to the main character. And I do think that this piece ends up achieving that, although not to the degree of, say, the actual screenshot. <laughs> so going back to what I was saying about music, um, I've got a lot of favorite bands. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you might have heard me talk about Blue October. Blue October is probably my favorite band. Um, Alter Bridge is another one of my favorites. I kind of listen to a lot of either rock, alternative, um, a little bit of pop, and then I love Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is another artist you've probably heard me talk about if you've watched any of my old videos. Um, I also like uh, country. I'm a country fan, so country is another genre that I enjoy listening to. So it really, it's a lot of just those genres. I don't really veer out too much. I don't listen to like the blues. I don't listen to rap or hip hop, that sort of thing. So those are really my preferences there. And then of course we come back to books. Uh, obviously reading is a big part of my life. I've always been a reader, uh, even during college when I was, you know, not really practicing artwork. I was still trying to read some uh, albeit not at the pace that I currently read. So, you know, art, music, and books have really been my primary media consumption. And then television, YouTube, and movies tend to take a back seat. So, that's more about me. I don't know if anyone cares. <laughs> uh, if you enjoy this video, please do let me know. 
uh, I'm not used to voicing over a whole real-time video so if this seems a little bit random I do apologize but as this is a screen cap redraw I just figured that would be kind of the ideal time to like have a get to know me more as far as the like medium media and fandoms that I consider myself to be a part of. Speaking of fandoms, I feel like people typically when they are talking about a fandom are more so referring to like anime or like Harry Potter, like a well-known what I would call quote unquote fandom as opposed to just individual movies or series that they enjoy. Um, as far as Obviously, I love Harry Potter, <laughs> but as far as like anime and stuff, I used to be pretty big into anime uh, when I was a kid growing up, but I have since like fallen out of touch with that media. Uh, I don't really draw it anymore. I don't really follow any of them, but the ones that I were was interested in when I was a kid uh, was really Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. I liked Naruto which I watched before they dubbed it in English. I used to watch it with subtitles from the Japanese version. So when they dubbed it to English, I was very mad. <laughs> and then I stopped watching it because I just, I didn't, I didn't like the voice that they gave Naruto. I didn't like really any of the characters anymore. So it just infuriated me and made me stop watching it. Um, I liked One Piece. One Piece was good. I'm trying to think, I don't think that there's really any others. So those would be like my quote unquote fandoms, if you will. And then obviously Harry Potter from a bookish perspective. Other book fandoms that I would be a part of? Hmm. I'm not really sure. I mean, I would consider, um, oh, like, hmm, nah, I don't know. Like, I don't really like Lord of the Rings, so I wouldn't consider myself part of that fandom. I'm having a hard time with this, considering that I read as much as I do. Um, I don't really have any more like popular series that I like that really have like a strong following. Tons of series that I like are really popular like on booktube and everything but none to the point that they've got like the merchandise and all of the like mainstream following that you know either anime or popular books like Harry Potter and um, Lord of the Rings have so. Things that have really been adapted into other mediums, so things that have like a movie series, <laughs> etc. I mean, I suppose uh, the Hunger Games would also fall into that. The Hunger Games uh, definitely had its uh, surgeons when the movies came out and everything, so I think that would count as well. I've really gotten off topic here. <laughs> if anyone is still listening, like shoot me a comment and let me know because I'd be fascinated to hear your thoughts. What are your favorites? Um, do you have any of the same favorites that I do? What are your favorite movies? <laughs> um, I'm always looking for suggestions. If you have any good like action adventure movies that you think I'd enjoy, please let me know. Or TV shows, like Netflix series. I have Netflix. I don't have any other streaming service. So, you know, if your suggestion requires a different streaming service, I probably won't watch it. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed this thus far. As far as the painting is concerned, I am now painting the foreground. Um, I would like to note that I did cut out most of like the color mixing with the exception of the little bits that you're seeing here. And I also cut out every time that I went into the water to clean my brush off. So, you know, this is real time in that I cut those sections out, but the rest of it is relatively real time. So I was trying to define a lot of the foreground elements because I felt like there was actually a lot of definition in this this scene as far as the foreground was concerned. Like you could really see all of the, not blades of grass, but like the foliage around him. There was so much like dense foliage at the, the base where he was walking. And so I tried to capture that as best as I could. And then it almost appeared as though there were some mountains in the background. So I tried to capture those as well. Unfortunately, I don't think that the main character was really 
well placed in perspective here. Um, <laughs> and I didn't do any definition of his face whatsoever. I think in the, in the photograph you can actually see, you know, the actual outline of his face and more of the definition there, including the definition in his clothing. But I chose to exclude that for the sake of having a more simplistic piece here. As this is just in my sketchbook, it, I didn't feel like it needed to be outrageously detailed or anything, nor did I feel like painting an outrageously detailed piece. Uh, also kind of figuring that I was going to leave this in real time for the video, I didn't want to make it an hour long, like my last real time paint with me, which if you haven't seen it, I'll link it above that one. Um, I did kind of fill with music at certain points, so it's not a full voiceover, but it did take about an hour to paint. And that was actually in a different sketchbook, and that was a full page spread. That was one of the biggest paintings I've done in a while. Um, but this one, much tinier, took much less time. I mean, at most, I think this took, I don't know, 25 minutes uh, in total with me, you know, keeping in all of the brush cleaning and all the pauses that I took to kind of look at my reference and then apply that to the painting. And then there were multiple times where I had to let the paint dry before I could continue. So in all, this piece probably took about 25 minutes, maybe, maybe half an hour, but not too much more than that. So, you know, not again, overly detailed, but I did really kind of like the outcome, so there you have it. I uh, tried to make the foreground obviously a bit more dark, and uh, see, in theory the foreground should have been like more detailed than it actually was too, but there wasn't a lot to really differentiate because of the way that the sun was hitting the foreground. Um, there wasn't as much to really differentiate in the foreground. Additionally, a lot of it was, like I said, cut out by the sun gaze, so there's that. <laughs> I'll try to keep the reference on the screen as much as possible so that you can kind of see what I'm working on and like move it around as I continue to paint. No guarantees though, as you know, I do want to kind of make this a little bit more interesting a video than I've done previously. Please let me know in the comments below what type of content you'd like to see next. Do you like these real-time videos? Do you prefer a speed painting? Uh, do you prefer videos with an artistic topic for discussion? Or do you like to maybe hear more about me or more about uh, my likes, dislikes, opinions, etc.? <laughs> Let me know, it, it'd just be helpful feedback to have for my channel so that I can continue to produce content that people will actually enjoy. <laughs> right now I'm really just producing the content that, you know, I feel I can and actually have motivation to do. I mean, this was a piece that I just, I was watching the show, I took the screenshot and was like, wow, that'd be a really cool thing to try to paint. I think that would look really cool with watercolors. And so I wasn't even really thinking about a video idea at the time, I just was really motivated by the piece. So uh, the photograph that I took with my laptop while I was watching the show, it was a really cinematic event and I really liked how they portrayed it, so I just wanted to paint it. Um, so that's kind of how I come up with my video ideas currently, but if you do have anything that you're looking for from, you know, an artist or specific things that you'd like to see, I would love to hear about it. At this point, we've got our uh, super cinematic requisite paint peeling. <laughs> I know that everyone loves seeing people uh, peel off the tape from their painting so that you get all of these nice, satisfying, crisp edges. Unfortunately, this paint is this paint. <laughs> Unfortunately, this tape is not the best. I usually use MT brand masking tape because it is fantastic. It sticks really well. It holds up to water and it doesn't rip the page. But for you know a piece like this in my less expensive, more kind of like chill sketchbook, I don't mind using real regular like Scotch masking tape. So that's what this is. 
and I tried to peel it a lot slower so that it would actually work. <laughs> and lo and behold, for the most part, it did. I did still achieve some satisfying crisp edges, although the paper did admittedly rip a little bit, <laughs> as you can see. Overall, I really enjoyed painting this piece. I think that it is a great addition to my screenshot redraws. I think anytime that I watch a television show on Netflix, I will try to do one of these at some point, depending on how many cinematic shots that I can get as far as screenshots are concerned. But again, thank you for watching. Until next time, I will see you. Please like and subscribe, by the way, if you haven't already. Thank you. Bye.